Hi, thanks for joining me today. Today is Wednesday, June 2nd. It is a Big Idea Wednesday. That's where I just come up with or talk about an idea that may help you understand yourself or the world a little bit better than you already do. Flame on. I appreciate everyone uh, hitting that like button, sharing videos, all that good stuff. They tell me it makes a difference. Who the hell knows, right? <laughs> uh, but today, I want to talk about this idea that I heard Scott Adams talk about just yesterday. I was listening to his uh, podcast or broadcast, whatever you want to call it, and he was talking about the idea of saying that you may be wrong, that you might be wrong. So if you hold a strongly held belief and you're expressing this to someone, you're giving an opinion on something, you always want to end it with, uh, I may be wrong or I might be wrong. Now, just a side note, do you know the difference between may and might? Now, I didn't know this. I actually looked this up today. It turns out that you use may when you're more likely to do something. So greater than 50%, you would use may. And if you would less likely do it, but there's still a possibility, less than 50%, you'd use might. So if you're pretty sure about something, you'd say, I might be wrong. But if you're not sure, and they think there's a good idea that you might be wrong, you'd say, I may be wrong on that. That's, you know, a little, little grammar side note there, if you will. But let's bring it back to cognitive dissonance. That's the topic of today. And Scott Adams was saying that when you are expressing an opinion with someone, and you always want to end it with, I might be wrong. I might be wrong about that. And there's a couple reasons why this is really important to do. But the main one, and I don't even think he realized how smart this was. The main reason is you want to give yourself an out so that you don't experience cognitive dissonance. Now, cognitive dissonance, here from uh, Wikipedia, is the perception of contradictory information. So relevant items of information include person's actions, feelings, ideas. Let's forget about the dictionary definition of it. I just want to give you an example. Essentially, what it is, you think one thing, you get some new evidence that goes against it. That gives you psychological stress, and you want to solve that. And so often what people will do is if they have an opinion on something, they get some new information, they just ignore that new information because it goes against their beliefs. Cognitive dissonance, that's what happens there. But the great thing is, is when you express an opinion and you say, eh, I might be wrong, then if you get some new information about this and it turns out that you're wrong, hey, that's okay because you already said you might be wrong. And so therefore, you are going to be able to accept that new information. Whereas if you just state something confidently, this is the way that it is, and you get some new information that goes against that, yeah, you're going to ignore that information. You're going to, you're going to hold on to that belief. You're going to call out that new information. That's a conspiracy. I don't believe any of that nonsense. And that's a natural human reaction. And as you want to be the most well-informed, thoughtful person around, you don't want that to happen to you. And so the way that you can do that is always have the possibility that you may be wrong when you're talking about something. Now, here's just a couple dumb examples of cognitive dissonance uh, here on the pages from the New Yorker humor section. Instagram perpetuates a cycle of toxic envy. And then here she is posting photos of her vacation in Tulum. So this does create uh, a cycle of toxic envy, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's me, right? And that's, that's uh, cognitive dissonance. Um, I want to lose weight. My goal weight can be achieved through cake. <laughs> These are silly, silly examples. Um, let's see. Here's an example of cognitive dissonance. Uh, refusing to spend an extra 10 cents for a paper bag at checkout because you're cheap. 
and then you spend 16 bucks on a salad that only has a tiny piece of half-cooked chicken. Again, cognitive dissonance. When that happens, you get this new information and you just ignore it because it, it feels uncomfortable if you were to admit this to yourself. And so this is a great guideline for everyone. When you're stating something that you're pretty sure is true, just always add at the end that you might be wrong. Now, I notice that this is something that I do. I've done this for a long time, and I think if you go through old videos of mine, I will often say I might be wrong about this. I didn't know why I was doing this. Now, perhaps I was doing it for this reason. Perhaps, I don't know. I think that I was doing it to try to be more humble or to not be over-the-top, know-it-all type of person. That's not how I want to be perceived. I want to be more welcoming with people. I don't really know my inner motivations for saying it, but now that I've thought about this here with uh, this idea that I got from Scott Adams, now that I've thought about it, I'm doubling down. I think that it is a really smart thing to do. Express an opinion, say, but I might be wrong. That's just my take on it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have an awesome day. Peace.